Hello, hello! In this video we're gonna take a look at uh, the Southern Company. This is a company that is basically a utility company and it has to do with uh, distribution of electricity, generation and transmission as well. A very, very well-known utility company in the US operating in uh, Georgia. Now we're going to be examining the details of this company and see whether it's a good uh, addition to the portfolio, especially since it is a dividend stock and uh, right now amidst this uh, high inflationary environment, adding some dividend stocks to the portfolio may be a good idea generating some passive income. If you know me, you know that I'm not a big fan of dividends because of their taxation regime pretty much. They are taxed twice, they are taxed in the source, which is the company, and they are taxed individually per, per investor. Now it really does depend on where you live, of course, but overall this tends to be the norm. Now in terms of the Southern Company, let's examine what they are doing here. You will see that the one year high has been 80 and we are basically there. So it, the company is, is barely down since that time, which is a massive win compared to the overall market. This is going to be a steady company, especially when we're looking at the, the, the whole stock market going down because of electricity and because it's generally speaking like a utility that's not going to go down a lot if it goes down. And you will take a look at the five years chart and you will see that this has been actually going up uh, these days. Now the financials is the thing, the P ratio of the company is sitting at 28 which is rather high for a utility company but what's even worse is that the price to free cash flow is a negative one which means that the company is losing money and have been losing money for a while now in terms of its free cash flow, a big big problem. They have been printing some shares that uh, definitely helps with uh, adding some uh, extra income to their uh, portfolio there. But if you take a look at their debt to equity ratio, you will understandably see it rise because the company has to be co to continue getting extra debt in order to be able to pay for their pretty high dividend compared to what they are making and also their operations. And so the dividend yield of the company is sitting at almost 3.4% right now, 3.4, it's actually 3.4 today. If we take a look at the dividends tab, you will, f you will find the effective dividend yield, which is with uh, today's price, basically, basically, and this is the last 12 month one. But right now it's sitting at 3.42. And you will see that the company has been growing their dividends for a while now, pretty much consecutively every, uh, every year over here. And... Um, the problem is, and it's a pretty big problem here, the fact that the company's payout ratio is sitting at 94% and that is their net income. But if you like, take a look at the free, free cash flow payout ratio, they don't have any free cash flow. So this is a very, very big problem because the company has two ways out of this. They will either have to print more shares and basically they lose stockholders or get more debt. And both these situations are actually pretty bad for an investor here. So I don't like what I'm seeing over here. And if you take a look at the financial statements, you will see the income statement of the company is basically where it was uh, a few years back, sitting at the same level. The only good thing about it is that they were making less net income then and they are making more right now. But if you take a look at the cash flow, which is at the end uh, the most important thing, you will see that uh, they're having operating cash flow of 6 billion, but they are, um, uh, their free cash flow is actually minus, minus one, mi 1 billion over here. And bec that's because of the high capital expenditures. Again, this is a utility company, high capital expenditures here, we, which basically deplete the free cash flow. This means that the company has to keep on getting debt and uh, pretty much in increase their debt uh, year over year unless they somehow are able to become uh, positive. And this hasn't happened for a while now. And if you take a look at um, act the actual balance sheet over here, you will see that the total, total debt of the company keeps rising over here and it's sitting at 55 billion right now, which is understandable because the company is not really making any free cash flow. And so they have to have some, some way to be able to pay the dividends to uh, their stockholders. But the problem is as a person potentially looking to be buying this one and you are looking at this, uh, you have to be thinking to yourself, how are they going to continue paying this kind of dividend? So that's it. that is not going to be feasible and that is unless, um, that's because they are an electricity company, unless they gain a lot of money this, like this upcoming years because of the electricity being uh, too expensive, I suppose. So this could actually be a way around, but it's rather risky. And I myself, um, you know, I don't think I would be able, I, I would want to be a you know, part of this company right now. Now, again, they may do well because of the electricity thing, but uh, it is a risky company based on the amount of dividends that they are paying in their operations here. And uh, the company is basically not growing at all even. So it's actually at the same levels uh, where it was back in 2017, pretty much. Amidst uh, the, you know, the COVID thing, they went down, of course. Now, the net income has been growing as, well so, as we saw, but recently going down. 
and the free cash flow in the negative. This is this is very very a very very bad sign here for the company. And total equity growth is growing a little bit, but remember they are also issuing some shares over here. Now, if we take a look at the institutional holders for this, you will see that um, actually Vanguard, BlackRock, for example, has be, have been adding some here, and they have uh, quite some uh, high amounts of ownership here for the company, and now. This uh, does make some sense because, of course, these kinds of companies uh, build uh, like pension portfolios as well. And so, you know, holding these uh, for, a, for a pension could be a, pot a potentially good idea. I'm not sure it is actually, but um, we do, you do see some, uh, some holders here from uh, some big holders, some big institutions adding some here and ha taking some ownership. Now, it's a, it's a small percentage of their overall portfolio, of course. They can take such uh, potential risks and pretty much make some money through the dividends through the years i suppose but um overall i'd say that even if you look at this uh, i think it's probably not a great idea to be owning this one right now again if you don't really expect that a massive boom in terms of electricity prices and the company be able to turn around their situation because they're, they're, the, the negative free cash flows is a pretty big thing here it's been going on for a while now I'm still going to go through the stock evaluation tool metrics here just to see what we're getting. The revenue growth of the company has basically been high in 2021 because, you know, kind of coming off the, for the pandemic, I suppose. But um, overall, the company has been growing at an about 3% uh, a year, I suppose. So we're going to go 1, 2 and 3% over here. In terms of the net income margins, they have been sitting at about 10 to 16%. Let's go in between 10, 13 and 16 and the problem is, of course, the free cash flow margins, which have always been negative. And so what can you do here? This is a big, big, big problem for the, for the company. Big trouble, really. They would have to cut down on some costs, do something with capital expenditures and basically uh, be able to turn this around and start making some free cash flow instead of uh, pretty much spending everything and then some. So 18, 90 and 100, the typical one. And I'm going to go for 13 percent, uh, the typical annual return that we want to be getting. If we hit calculate here, let's see what we're getting. And you'll see that even our high estimates here with the 3% revenue growth, they are still giving us a 52 for the high price to pay for this one. And it's currently sitting at 80. And so I do believe that this is a pretty risky proposition here, adding this company to a portfolio. Again, I do understand that uh, people do want some nice uh, dividends, but I do feel that this one could be risky or become risky in a while. Like it may, it may be fine for the next uh, couple of years or so, two, three years maybe, uh, while the electricity does well but maybe after that the company will be forced to cut down on some dividends here they look rather lucrative for what the company is uh, generating in uh, actual money so i am worried about this one i wouldn't really reco recommend it for a portfolio so thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed and uh, please remember to leave a like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video bye bye for now